Voyager 1 Full Journey Just like many other curiosities, man is curious about where we live, and by that we don't mean the country or continent, but beyond our planet, what exactly is going on out there? In order to satisfy those urges to know more about life beyond planet Earth, man invented advanced robots and rockets and sent them out of the planet. One such invention was that of a space probe we know as Voyager 1. This is According to Science, and today we are going to tell you all you need to know about this space probe and the mission behind it. If you are interested in knowing about what is Voyager 1, who and how was it sent to outer space, know all about the complete timeline till 2020 and discoveries it made, what data is on the Voyager, what will it see next, and when will it be out of work, stay tuned to watch the whole video. Voyager 1 was a space probe sent by NASA back in 1977 on September 5th in order to explore outer space and find out everything they could. This space probe was launched shortly after its twin Voyager 2 was launched, and as of 20th of August, this space probe has marked 42 years, 10 months, and 9 days in outer space, sending us all the information we have today about the space and other planets. Back in the 1960s, a proposal was put forward to explore outer space under the name of Grand Tour, and NASA started working on it in the 70s later on. The Voyager was designed under the knowledge that scientists and engineers got from the Pioneer 10 and constructed the space probe accordingly. Modifications were made in the design to withstand the extreme radiation in the environment near Jupiter and enhance radiation shielding. Initially, Voyager 1 was to be named as Mariner 11, under the Mariner program. However, due to budget costs, the mission was scaled back to fly up to Jupiter and Saturn only, thus renamed as the Mariner Jupiter-Saturn probes and was later changed to Voyager since the probe designs began to differ greatly from previous Mariner missions. The space probe was supposed to cover the largest moon visible from Saturn. Titan, which helped us get the information about the weather, magnetic fields, and rings of the two planets. It was also the first probe to provide detailed images of their moons and the only man-made object to have reached such a long distance as of March 12, 2020. Moving on to the timeline of the probe and the discoveries it made along its journey of almost 43 years, the probe ended up giving us the most valuable pieces of information and became one of the most important space missions. After its launch in 1977, the first image of the Earth and the Moon was captured on September 6, 1977 and sent to Earth by this very space probe. It later entered the asteroid belt on 10th December, and by 1978 the Voyager 1 successfully exited the asteroid belt after taking over Voyager 2 and moved on to observe Jupiter by 6 January 1979. On March 5, 1979, NASA obtained the first clear picture of Jupiter, thus discovering the first active volcano spotted beyond Earth and Moon, the Jovian ring system and two moons of Jupiter. It was the first time a space probe had managed to get so close to Jupiter. At this point, the scientists also discovered the presence of the Great Red Spot, which was a huge cyclone-like storm and proof of early tectonic activities in the shape of grooved terrain found on Ganymede. Lightning activity was detected on Jupiter. The probes experienced how the magnetic field on the moon low affect the entire Jovian system. Low happens to be the primary source of matter that has a major effect on the Jovian magnetosphere. Elements like sulfur, oxygen, and sodium that erupted by Low's volcanoes and moved off the surface by impact of high energy particles were detected at the outer edge of the magnetosphere of Jupiter. Low acts like an electric generator that sends about 5 million amperes of current along the magnetic field to Jupiter. By November 9, 1980, Voyager 1 first encountered Saturn with the closest approach towards the planet on November 12th. This flyby brought us to the discovery of three moons on Saturn named Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora, making the scientists believe that the presence of Prometheus and Pandora in Saturn's F-ring makes it important to keep the ring material in line. 
Other discoveries include complex structure of Saturn's ring structure, and about 7% of Saturn's upper half consists of helium gas while the rest is hydrogen mostly. On the other hand, data gathered from Titan showed the presence of nitrogen-rich atmosphere that is not found on Earth, thus leading to the ideology of presence of seas of liquid methane and ethane. Voyager's measurement of the atmosphere's effect on sunlight and Earth-based measurement of its effect on the probe's radio signal were used to determine the atmosphere's composition, density, and pressure. Titan's mass was also measured by observing its effect on the probe's trajectory. The thick layer of gases caused hindrance in getting any visual observation of the surface, but the measurement of the atmosphere's composition, temperature, and pressure led to speculation that lakes of liquid hydrocarbons could exist on the surface. On the 14th of February 1990, Voyager 1 exited the heliosphere and managed to take the first image of the solar system from the outside as we see it in pictures in our textbooks today. This image includes Earth being visible as a tiny blue dot in the solar system, but the camera from the probe was removed after that, making it difficult to gather pictorial information of the space. This was done to utilize the power and computers used to gather other data necessary for future references. On February 17, 1998, the Voyager managed to move past the Pioneer 10, becoming the first ever man-made object to have reached that far from Earth. Traveling at about 17 kilometers per second, it has the fastest heliocentric recession speed of any spacecraft so far. By December 16, 2004, Voyager 1 crossed the termination shock, a point from where the heat rises up and solar wind slows down drastically. This marks the inner boundary of the heliosheath and beginning of a new journey beyond that point. However, a disadvantage of this crossover is that the antennas in the space probe were not designed to deal with the changes in temperature and solar wind, thus collecting data of whatever is happening out there cannot be transmitted to Earth. This failure meant that termination shock detection would have to be inferred from the data from the other instruments on board. On May 2005, it was confirmed by NASA that the space probe had entered the heliosheath, and later, on December 13, 2010, it was confirmed that Voyager 1 had passed the reach of the radial outward flow of the solar wind as the low-energy charge particle device measured it. It is suspected that solar wind at this distance turned sideways because of interstellar wind pushing against the heliosphere. By December 1, 2011, it was announced that Voyager 1 had detected the first ever clear Lyman Alpha radiation originating from the Milky Way galaxy. Even though these radiations had previously been detected from other galaxies, but due to the constant interference from the Sun, the radiation from the Milky Way was not detectable. By December 5, 2011, NASA announced that Voyager 1 had entered a new region known as the Cosmic Purgatory. According to the information on this region, charged particles stream from the sun slow and turn inward, while the solar system's magnetic field is doubled in strength as interstellar space appears to be applying pressure. By June 2012, NASA announced that Voyager 1 had reached the Helios pause. By August 2012, it became the first ever spacecraft to have passed the heliopause. In March 2013, it was announced that Voyager 1 might have become the first spacecraft to enter interstellar space. Listing down all of the important discoveries and milestones a space probe has discovered till now, it is expected of the Voyager to enter the Oort cloud in another 300 years and get out of it in another 30,000 years. It is expected to make adverse discoveries provided that it doesn't collide with anything and gets destroyed because nobody can go that far to fix it. In December 2017, it was announced that NASA had successfully fired up all four of Voyager 1's trajectory correction maneuver thrusters for the first time since 1980. The TCM thrusters will be used in the place of a degraded set of jets, which were used to help keep the probe's antenna pointed toward the Earth and keep the information flowing in. When will it retire? Probably by 2025 to 2030 in case of shortage of power to gather and record information. If you like this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay up to date for more interesting videos in the future.